Okay, welcome back. Okay, we'll we'll uh, move into chapter seventeen in the SAR as we um, as we had spoken about. The last chapter was about uh, uh, the about family prayer and how we intercede for the family. Um, another part of nurturing um, our family in in spiritual growth uh, is to help the family. Uh, engage and understand what the local church community means. What does it mean to be a part of a local church? What does it mean to serve in a local church? And what is the importance of uh, a church in the life of the, of the family? So we, we hope to have an understanding of uh, the importance of being a part of the local church and how we can nurture the family to understand what the kingdom of God is and how we can, uh, how the family can seek together to further the kingdom of God. Um, so one of, yes, one of the biggest requirements will be to be a part uh, of a good church where the word of God is being taught is where um, Jesus Christ is the center of the faith of that body. Uh, it is a church that is filled with the work uh, of the Holy Spirit. So the, uh, the important thing for a family is to find and be committed to a church such as that. So to be being within, to be really not just attend a church, but also be part of the family be a place where they are serving uh, the Lord in that community. So uh, it, it, it's good to have um, sought uh, of a, a church to be a part of rather than moving from one church to, an, uh, to another. Because when you do that, um, uh, especially for the children, it gets difficult because there isn't a community to engage with. There isn't a pl one place of, gro of growth. Uh, and it's only like, like, a, you know, like, a, like a plant, you can't keep repotting it every day, right? You need to ensure that it stays in a particular pot so that it grows. So similarly, it's important not to keep hopping around, which in not hopping around churches, but to find a place to grow and uh, find a place to be established in. So, um, what are some of the some of the pointers that we will we need to look at? So we we look. I'm, I'm at chapter 17. If you would like to follow through, I'm at chapter 17. So the important uh, practice is to being in church uh, every Sunday. Uh, as you um, you know, you would we read in Acts how the uh, in the early church that people met together, um, and they uh, they met together as uh, as a as a community, and it was it was in you will read that in Acts where they it became a practice to meet uh, at the first day of the week. So it is important for all the family to come together. Uh, with other families or with other believers so that they can worship, they can um, come together to hear from God's word and to be able to fellowship. So this is important to make this a practice. Um, so even as we look at uh, uh, being in church, it, it, you know, what, what are you, what do we convey to the family as we ensure that we are doing this, is that the, that God has importance. God is important for us, and coming together in, in a larger family is something that we choose to do. And you know, yeah, of course, there may be some of those days or some of those Sundays because of uh, either someone is unwell or because of you know maybe travel or things like that. You probably miss uh, doing so but on a regular basis to ensure that you have you come to church i remember as a um, you know as a school going uh, girl uh, i was never never uh, my my parents never um, permitted me to miss a sunday even if there were board exams or 
or other things on a Sunday, you know, I would need to be in church. I would have to be in church. And I thank God that they did that because that's something that, you know, I, I also tend to practice. So um, whereas, whereas, you know, in, in I'd see a whole lot of other people during board exams or exams just giving church a miss. But when you're actually putting God first, you know, all the other things will will take care of it, itself. So um, ensuring that you are in church together. Now, it doesn't matter which day of the week that probably your church meets in, especially if you aren't uh, um, maybe the side of the world. If you're in some other side of the world, you may, you may, may have another day that is established as a day that you can go to church and and that's perfectly uh, perfectly okay whichever day it is it's just being part of church and being in that community okay now what is uh, what does being in a church of believers uh, mean being in a church of believers is like being in the household of god as first timothy 3:15 puts it conduct yourselves in god's household it is the church of the living God. So the local church, it's no, it's just not a building that you attend to, but uh, see it as, as a larger family. It's the family of God. Okay. And uh, we need to, um, so what are we doing? It's that our, our own family, our personal family is belonging to a larger family. And as a result, when we are in that family, we, uh, we, we support one another, we encourage one another, we build each other up, we care for one another through the relationships that we have with each other because of the common factor of, of God in our lives. So it's it's that which, which creates that belonging. When we connect with others in this family, when we build relationships with others, either to encourage them or to, or to bring them up or, or, you know, just to help people grow. Uh, the next thing that we need to do as part of a, of being in a family, just like how you would be in your own family, it's just not belonging there. It is also doing something there to serve the family. Um, so each of us may, you know, in our own uh, earthly families, in our home families, we may all have different gifts or or there may be certain things that we do well and or certain things that uh, maybe you as an individual are assigned to do and uh, and that's what helps the family function helps the family grow together uh, uh, as uh, you know as a unit so similarly serving in church also has a purpose each of us have been given a certain talent or a certain gift that we use for one another. So let's just read scripture. Um, first Peter chapter four, verses 10 to 11. Is there someone who can read that out, please? As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. So what do we see here? That um, each of us, uh, whatever gift, gifting God's put in us, uh, or whatever ability God's put in us, it is not meant to be kept. It's not meant to be pocketed, but it is meant to be distributed, or it is meant to contribute to another to serve somebody else okay um, we we shouldn't be as buckets who collect water but we should be like hose pipes who uh, are channels of uh, of you know spreading that whatever gift that god has put in us to that of others so when you're serving in church Remember, uh, and as it is written in Corinthians, it talks about it, it. You know, it talks about the unity and the diversity that's there. That each of us, uh, being in the body, when you look at your physical body, each of us have a certain role and a part to play. And so the it says, right, the head cannot uh, cannot say, "I'm not in need of another part of the body," or another part cannot, the hand cannot say, "I'm not in need of the head." 
we all need each other in the body uh, of Christ. Depending on the gifting that each of us have, we use it for the glory of God. So when we're looking at a church, maybe the gifting of some is probably to sing and to worship, right? Or the skill God's given them is to be able to um, uh, worship God through, through music or through their voices. Maybe that's not a gifting that everyone has. Maybe the gifting of another person is being very good with um, money and being able to administer finances. So you may be in the team where you are uh, uh, you know, checking on the finances or taking the offertory and counting that. Now, it doesn't mean that, that a person doing one uh, uh, work or, or, or ministering or serving is lesser than the other. Each of us have our significant specific roles to play according to what we each of us have received. So there isn't anyone in the, in the family of God who is much more um, weighted, weighed than the other person. Each of us contribute in the way that God's gifted us, just like your hands can do the work that your hands can do. It can't walk for you, right? It can take things. It can hand over things. You can't walk with your hands. Neither can the feet be that which receives or which cooks or which makes or which writes. But it has a specific purpose. It takes you from place to place. So similarly, even each of us being in the body of Christ have a specific gifting which we need to use for the glory of God. And uh, also to remember that it is meant to be used. It All that we have should be used to serve God, whether it is your time, whether it is your skill, whether it is your talent, whether whatever it is, it is used for the larger body of Christ. So that's, that's a responsibility that we have when we belong to a family, to, the family of God. And um, if we want our children to serve, as parents, we've got to take the first step in serving in some way or the other. So if you have younger children or maybe uh, children who still probably just do the attendance in church, look back at your lives to see whether you are being an example of um, uh, putting to use whatever God has uh, put in put in you. So it's it's just the gifts that we are given is just not like you know feathers in our cap, but it is really to to serve God. All right. The next one is um, when we belong to a local church family, it is to nurture and engage with that with with people who may be younger. Right? And you see that, uh, that Paul gives this instruction uh, in Titus. So could somebody read Titus chapter 2, verses 3 and 4? Titus chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. In the same way, instruct the older women to behave as women should who live a holy life. They must not be slanderers or slaves to wine. They must teach what is good in order to train the younger women to love their husbands and children. OK, so you do see here that um, it that what, what Paul was saying is was instructing the older women in uh, in that community to be able to train the younger ones in practical things of life. So here uh, Paul is saying that uh, in, they must not be slanderers to uh, slanderers or slaves to wine. They must teach what is good, love their husbands and children, live a holy life. So it was like a, a, a mentoring or an instruction that the older women were to give the younger women. Uh, now this doesn't mean uh, you only have the women doing it, but you know we can we can infer that it was similar even for men that they engage with younger men to to discuss things that uh, that may be of practical practical living so it's important to to be in a community where you're looking up to those who you can learn from 
right? And uh, um, get support, get help, get a form of mentoring. And uh, so that's something that uh, as part of APC, we have something called as a mentoring program where uh, uh, anyone can come in for mentoring for different kind of life issues that they may be going through. It could be uh, probably spiritual growth. It could be with regard to business. It could be regard to workplace ethics. It could be with marriage and family. Uh, it can be with personality, personal personal growth. So it, it's just uh, giving giving to others who may require of it. All right. Now this does not just mean this is for the older people, but uh, we are also looking at. The younger, and if you look at First um, uh, Timothy chapter four twelve, Paul is encouraging Timothy, and he's saying he's telling him uh, to 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 live a life that is exemplary, to live a life of example, and not let anyone look down upon you because you're young. You know, not discourage you because you're young, but be an example to different things. It says in your speech, in your conduct, in your love, in your faith, in your purity. So to live a life that is uh, as, as a child of God. So this is, again, something even as young people, you can, as young, if there's any, any of us who are sitting here who's young, um, uh, you know, you can be an example to those, to others, uh, and through, through the life that, that you, are, you are living. So um, when you are in a family, you are, again, looking at, be a, you're a part of a larger family where you're able to encourage and nurture others as well as being nurtured by others. So you need we're, we're looking at giving of ourselves to build uh, in ourselves in that community as well as others. The other part of being part of the local group is a is what we call as a life group or a or a cell group or an area group, whatever it may be called in probably in in other other in your terms but it's they're essentially smaller groups um, of people that meet in homes or other places just to build relationships and to fellowship with one another and to grow uh, in their spiritual walk so uh, why are life groups um, essential you know if you're a big community in a church to have that personal relationship with others sometimes becomes a struggle. And that's why smaller groups of families, maybe 10 to 12 families coming together, where there are meaningful relationships that are being developed. People grow one to another. Um, uh, there is a lot of discipleship that happens. So it is, it is a meaningful connect that takes place um, outside of the Sunday service. So it's a it's a, it, it's any time that you meet during the week and coming to get together. You we see that this was quite a common uh, occurring in the early church. If you look at Acts two forty six, it says um, uh, Acts five fifty two. It says day and daily in the temple and in every house they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as Christ. So this is they met not just at a time when uh, they met at at one day. Uh, one day in the week when they were praying, when they were coming together as a community, but then they met even even uh, uh, other days. So that that's a practice again that when we do, we're actually building some meaningful connections. The next one is missions. Uh, missions is uh, is something where we we bring forth the gospel to to a, a community or to a people. Uh, who may not have access uh, to it. So, uh, uh, you know, our belief is that every one of us, every believer, we are called to engage in missions. And it, it just means uh, or, missions actually co comes from um, fulfilling what Jesus had uh, commissioned, the Great Commission where it says, go make disciples of all nations okay so it it is bringing the knowledge of god the gospel of god uh, to those who who do, who have not heard who have not seen who probably are lost so uh, in families when as parents when we make that commitment to be missional we are actually living good examples um, 
we could do this by actually taking our children for maybe any kind of uh, outreach any kind wherever whether it's within the city or other places when you when you're having mission trips involving the children in that so that they're also part and they're also able to see your involvement and how you assist others in um, in bringing forth the gospel of god and bring forth the gospel so um, when they are able to see our commitment they too will at some point of time uh, you know begin to do that themselves now there are different kinds of missions but whatever we are engaging in we are ensuring that uh, we engage it for the glory of god and as well as to bring about um uh to to bring about the gospel to to bring about the knowledge of god uh, to places that are lost the next that we look at is uh, tithing um so a practice that we need to develop uh, is to bring up our children in the knowledge of of understanding that it's important to tithe to the local church now apart from uh, tithing we also um live out generous lives a life of kindness where we are also giving to people in need apart from tithing so we we first of all let them we need to teach the children that it's an instruction that god gives to be able to uh, give back to uh, give back to the local church or to help others others in need and uh, um, helping children understand that when we tithe we are tithing so that the work of the kingdom of god can be further established okay and bringing our children into a place of practice that they themselves can tithe so one way of doing that is maybe they are given some monthly uh, uh, allowance or some money and from that to encourage them to give 10% of their income to the uh, to to church okay so but when you're doing this you're actually helping them practice this early on in life and they get the importance of what tithing is okay and the last one is to uh, help them develop a kingdom mindset or to bring about a kingdom focus so in all things that we do we need to uh, we need to bring or communicate to our children the importance of seeking uh, god's kingdom and uh, ensuring that god's kingdom is established in everything that we do so just to really challenge them that whatever we do whether it be at our workplace in our families uh, in the decisions that we take uh, in all that we do that our focus is on how do we further the kingdom of god how do we uh, bring about the purposes of god how do we establish the the uh, the rule rule of god in our hearts in in the life of our families so we continue to do that so that um, in everything that we do we are seeking the kingdom of god first above all else that we do and that's something that um uh that that we we bring about in our in our, in our practice in the way that we do things and possibly also in the way that we live and in the way that we teach them that everything that we do uh, is for the kingdom of god is so that the kingdom of god will be honored will be established uh, will be will be brought forth okay so these are some of the things that um you know uh, that element in marriage where we are bringing about spiritual nourishment and spiritual growth in our families all right okay this was a this is a pretty short chapter we're almost we're, we're done in this chapter but i'm open for any questions or any kind of uh, thoughts or um um you know any anything that you all would like to bring any questions or even any testimonies would be would be nice to hear from a few of you Yes, Sam. Please go ahead. Yeah, actually. Uh, so what I've observed actually um, with a lot of young people is uh, the they don't 
have that uh, reverence for giving um you know especially tithes and offering so that's that's something that's got me thinking maybe and you know some most of these are students uh, from another city who come um so maybe it's the upbringing right which is very important to kind of teach them about the value of generosity and all of that so it's like an observation that i'm i'm seeing um, that not many people have the proper understanding of tithing or giving but not sure just just wanted to bring that across yeah yeah thanks sam for bringing that up because uh, i i think just recently we did uh, uh, I don't remember where, but I remember there was it was somewhere in Bible college. Someone brought up a question about tithing and uh, how much and where, right? So that in itself, I think uh, that is a teaching that generally uh, is is probably not spoken about. Uh, there is maybe even the upbringing, as Samuel said, and also uh, open teaching about why is it needed that we bring back um, or um, give to God because it's an act of worship. It's an act of giving back to God what he has blessed us with. So I think some of the things is, uh, and since you said that, Sam, is, is really a teaching about what does it mean to tithe? What does it mean to be generous? Um, uh, because I, I do see some people do have an intention to tithe, but whatever the one-tenth that they've kept aside, they may actually not give to the local church, but maybe may give to someone in need, thinking that that's a tithe. So just to establish and understand that may be a great thing to do, to help young people uh, know what are biblical guidelines of being generous, of tithing, of giving back to God, and and making it uh, making it something as as a discipline. And I think for all of us here who have who are parents and who have children, establishing that right from a young age. It may not be their own money, but uh, it may be something that you're giving to them, like a, like a pocket money or like an allowance, and to encourage it, encourage them to give from that, or uh, that one tenth that they are able to put in their offertory bag. So even, even the very act of taking that whatever money they have and putting it into the offertory bag or wherever or putting into a cover whatever whichever means it is uh is is a learning in itself so yeah i, I would agree yeah. that a teaching and a practice yeah thank you sir uh anything else any other observations any other thoughts Um, I, I think I thought I, I wanted to bring up this point, especially when it comes to serving, that um, uh, a lot of times uh, people um, hesitate to serve because one, they don't know where to serve or what is it that they could do uh, to serve. Um, and uh, uh, or the fact that, you know, they are not sure who they need to reach out to. So uh, I've, I've generally found this pretty helpful, like especially when you're meeting someone who's come in new um, and you're meeting them for a couple of weeks, you're just saying hi, actually just saying, you know, would you like to serve in church? Is there anything that you'd like to do? Um, what, do you, what, what do you think you're inclined most to do? Someone just getting into a conversation with them it becomes very, very helpful because sometimes it's difficult for people to move out of their warm seats and, you know, just do that serving. Um, but if, uh, especially if you you have, if you, you are a good connector with people, just observing who all have been new and just approaching them and saying, you know, would you like to serve, uh, would really help, you know, help them move out of that shell. And once they are in a group or in a team to serve, you would see that relationships are established quickly and uh, that becomes and helps them to stay planted helps them to stay connected because we are all people of relationships if we don't relate um, you know especially in in a in a church we become extremely isolated right so that's one thing to to when, when you get people to serve you are helping them build relationships and helping them to stay planted and, and grow through through that in 
in, in a different way. So that's that I've, I've seen is a very, very helpful means of uh, getting people to serve. OK, anything else? Any other thoughts? Hello. Yes, Lucy. Sister, we were from CSI background earlier. Mm. Then um, for the sake of our children, we shifted to Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. Church, they, from the time they have been saved, uh, they're serving in the church. And I thank God for this blessing, for their growth in their spiritual lives. Mm -hmm. Both of, both my son and daughter. She's mm -hmm. a daughter. She's, she serves in the choir team. And my daughter and uh, my son in the media team, both of them mm -hmm. serve. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for you just give an example to what I just thought about. Thank you. Thanks, sister. Anybody else? If not, we'll just close with a word of prayer. I know we just had a 30 minutes today, but that's OK. All right, shall we just close with a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for uh, putting us in families and giving us a larger family um, in our local church. Lord, we pray that uh, you will instill in us a desire to serve uh, and to be examples to our homes, to our children in serving. Father, we pray, God, that, uh, that you would build in us a desire to, to really stay established in, in the larger family of God and do things and work as unto the Lord with whatever gifting you've given us. Lord, we also take this time to pray, especially for our homes. Thank you for the promises that you have declared. We just bless our homes. We, we just thank you for the blessing that's there in our tents. Your word says, Lord, that the tent of the righteous will flourish, will be blessed. The tent of the righteous, Lord, will, will rejoice. There will be sounds of rejoicing. We pray, God, for our children, that they will be blessed of you, that, Lord, uh, that they will be taught of you and great will be their peace. Lord, that they will declare your name that the Spirit of God will be upon them. Father, we pray, God, for the members in our homes that do not know you, do not walk with you. Father, we pray for encounters with the Holy Spirit. We pray, Lord, that they will grow in the knowledge and the understanding of God. Lord, that uh, the, the eyes of their understanding will open, that their spirit man Lord, will open to the truth and the knowledge of God. Lord, I pray, Father, that uh, they will seek you with all their hearts and they will find you. We pray against every work of the enemy over the lives of our home, our family members. We pray, Lord, that uh, your rule, your reign, your dominion will be established in, the, in, in our families. We pray, God, for protection of uh, our elderly, and we thank you that you will be with them till the end of their time, that you will establish your work in their lives. We pray, God, for us as homes, that you will protect, guard, bless, strengthen, comfort each of our homes. May we stand always to declare who you are, Lord, and we pray, God, that our children and our descendants will, will speak of your truth, of your goodness, will never have the word of God depart from their mouths. Thank you for your blessing. I pray for each family that is represented here on this call, as well as anyone who watches it. God, we speak, God, that uh, your grace will abound in each home that each of us will fulfill, each family will fulfill the purpose that you have ordained us to, that every member will fulfill the destiny that you have purposed. Thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Thank you all very much. Uh, I will meet you next week. God bless each of you. Thank, Thank you. you, sister. Thank you.